Let's talk about this common scenario that gets asked fairly frequently within designs with customers. And that is, can I take traffic from my users that are connected via VPN into Azure and then send that traffic out to the internet via a firewall, in effect, using Azure as a centralized internet breakout for my users? And what I want to show in this video is the answer is yes by using the secured hub Azure Virtual WAN, where you have the Azure firewall inside the hub there. And why this might have value, for example, you can use the Azure Firewall Premium SKU with things like TLS inspection, category based FQDN filtering, IDPS for users, etc. And there's also some nuance around do you want to send all internet traffic via Azure out to the internet, or do you just want to use Azure for specific destinations on the internet? And we'll talk about how we can do that. It's important to step back and call out that I'm not in any way advocating the centralized internet breakout model as a recommended pattern here. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If you've got users out there at home using their local ISPs or in internet cafes around the world, you probably want to approach your distributed security policy in a way which lets them break out locally via their local ISP as soon as possible to get to internet services which make use of distributed caching and that will offer you the best performance. The best example of that that comes to mind is how we build Office 365 and the recommendation that we make strongly to use local breakout and get traffic onto the internet as soon as possible so that you can reach Microsoft where we deliver the service in the edge network. But well, that said, there are scenarios where you might want to do this. So let's explain how this will work. So here I've got my user and on the local machine, I've got the Azure VPN client set up. I'll show you that now. This is my Azure VPN client. I've got three profiles here and we'll get into why that's the case in a second. So the Azure VPN client uses OpenVPN as the protocol. And my authentication type here is Azure Active Directory, which means that when I connect the VPN, I have to input my Active Directory credentials. And there's an element of token authentication that happens between the client and the front end of Azure AD. The head end inside of Azure is a virtual WAN hub with the P2S gateway enabled and the Azure firewall inside of it with internet security enabled for my P2S users. Again, let's show you what that looks like. Here's my virtual WAN hub, and here's my user VPN client configuration. Down here, we can see that propagate default route is indeed set to enabled. So that's gonna send a zero zero route to my clients. And that toggle was flipped for me automatically when I've set up the Azure Firewall via Azure Firewall Manager to be used for securing internet traffic. And I've come down here to my P2S VPN connections and set them, I've ticked these boxes here and set them to secure internet traffic. What's also interesting to call out is here's my Azure firewall that's inside of my virtual WAN hub. Notice that it's got this public IP here, 20.67. So if I'm going out to the internet via Azure, I would expect to come from this address because Azure firewall will source out the traffic to that address. On my client, if I go to my favorite IP finding website, ipchicken.com, you will see that this is my ISP. So this is me at home on a Virgin Media in the UK. This is my local IP address for my ISP. If we go back to the diagram, we can see that information here on the user. This is my local ISP address here. So if I'm going out locally to the internet, I will come from this IP address. If I'm going down the VPN, I will go over here to Azure. From the P2S gateway, I'll go to my firewall. If the firewall policy allows my traffic, I will then go to the internet and I'll be sourced from this IP address here. So let's look at the default client behavior when you configure things as I've shown you and you go into your virtual WAN hub here, you download your VPN profile, you come into your Azure VPN client and you import that profile. 
So let's explain why I've got a few profiles here. So this top one is what you get with the default experience. I've literally imported the profile. If I connect here, I'll choose my test account that I've got set up in Azure Active Directory. And by the way, I'll leave some guides in the description below on how to set up the end-to-end -end P2S authentication with Azure Active Directory. You can see that I'm connected here. I've got this IP address here on my VPN interface. And you see here from the head end, from Azure Virtual WAN, I'm getting this default route here. I'm getting this bunch of other routes as well. And these all correspond to VNets and other transit networks that Virtual WAN is bridging my P2S VPN to. Now you might expect with this default configuration here, that now I would start sending all traffic to the internet via Azure Virtual WAN because of that default route. However, what you find is if you look up your IP address, if I go back to the IP Chicken website, I'm still getting my IP address as my local ISP. Why is that? Well, if I show the routing on my local client here, it becomes clear why. I've got two default routes. The top one here is my local interface a Wi-Fi interface on my laptop in this example. And the second default row here is the one that's been learned from Azure Virtual WAN via my P2S tunnel, but it's got a higher metric. And that's due to how Windows interprets metrics on certain interfaces. So even though the client's received that route, it's not actually being used at the moment. This is where we can refer to some other documentation on the Azure website around being able to add custom routes to your Azure VPN client config. So when you download that configuration, it comes down as an XML file and you are able to add custom parameters. So for example, here, it's talking about the ability to add custom routes. Here's my Azure VPN config that I've downloaded from the portal. I've copied the file and I've added this section here, the include root section bound within the client config parameter. And I've added two slash one routes, which are more specific than the default route that my local client has out of its local interface. If I go back to my Azure VPN client now, and disconnect that VPN, I've already imported that other profile that I've just shown you. Now let me try connecting to that one. Now you see the routes that it learns here at the top are the same, but because of the configuration we made to the XML file, down the bottom here, you've got these two additional slash ones. And now if I show the routing again on my client, you see I have these two slash one routes here. And these are going to be more specific than the default route. So if I go back to the website that returns my public IP, we can see that now I'm appearing to the internet via the Azure Firewall IP. So whereas before I was going out to the internet directly from my local ISP, I'm now going over my client VPN tunnel via Azure Firewall and onto the internet. So all traffic now is going via Azure Firewall. It's worth pointing out one note in the Azure documentation, which could be easily missed around P2S force tunneling with virtual WAN, which again, I'll leave a link to below. Here it talks about the process that we've gone through to enable the internet traffic via Azure Firewall. It also talks about the ability to do it via an NBA or a third party service like Zscaler with the native integration we went for the enable internet security flag. Now, whereas before we observed the behavior where the local interface, uh, Wi-Fi in my case, was preferred and we used those slash ones, there is a different solution presented in this document. And I want to walk through that now, some of the things to be aware of. This is around the Azure VPN client having a version number here. So when you download that XML file, Depending on some factors in the background, you may have this version field set to one or two. Now in the config that I've demonstrated so far, the version was set to one, and we saw the behavior that I've demonstrated. If I go back into my XML now and change this version field, which is right near the bottom, to two, resave the XML, go back into the Azure VPN client, re-import as a new connection here with the version two syntax, if I connect again, let me show you how it differs this time. 
but a version two in effect instantiates some different behavior of the client. You have to make sure you're running the latest Azure VPN client from the store or the latest download version. You see here, now I've just got this single force tool default route represented in this field here, whereas before we had all of those routes stipulated. And now if I go back into my root print output, we notice a distinct difference here. The Azure VPN client is not injecting every route that virtual one sends it, it's just injecting is one single zero zero root with the VPN interface here. And notice the metric. The metric now is much lower. There's a modification that's happened here with that version two field that's changing the routing metrics on my local client. So now all traffic is being tunneled to virtual WAN, even without we having those slash ones. But there's something you need to be aware of here. Even though that's happening, my DNS is broken on my local client. So for example, if I try and go to the IP chicken website, I can't do that because it cannot resolve the name. If I look inside of my DNS configuration, we can see that the local Wi-Fi interface has these DNS servers here. These are the DNS servers provided by my local ISP. And you can see that if I try and do an NS lookup for any domain name, they are indeed the servers that my client is still trying to use. And the behavior exhibited with the version two profile is that I cannot reach this DNS server. Just to highlight that it is a DNS problem, if I look up the same FQDM and manually specify a DNS server that is reachable on the internet, then I get the resolution working okay. So if I was to go into my client configuration now, update my DNS settings to use a public DNS server, one that is reachable via virtual WAN, this is going to work fine. But that particular DNS server that my ISP runs is not reachable in this case. So what's the solution here? Well, to fix the fact that my clients are failing DNS resolution when using the full tunnel via virtual WAN, Inside of the P2S configuration, I can specify some custom DNS servers. So I need a server that lives in my VNet, which has got a private IP that can then proxy those requests onwards to the internet. And there's numerous solutions here. I could use my own DNS server, a third-party DNS server. I could use an Nginx proxy. I could use a Windows domain controller, but there are some native options. There's a Azure DNS private resolver, which is in GA. But because I've also got Azure Firewall configured, as we talked about already, I'm going to leverage the fact that Azure Firewall can be a DNS proxy as well, which I've enabled. So I'm going to use the private IP of the firewall there, 1016.64.4. Okay, I've re-downloaded the profile from the portal. I've gone into my XML that I downloaded and I noticed that automatically this entry for the DNS server has been added, it's that Azure Firewall IP. And down the bottom here, I've again updated the version to two and saved it, imported it into the Azure VPN client. This time we see the same route coming in, the same GUI change with the version two in the XML. We also see that DNS server coming in as our Azure Firewall, acting as a DNS proxy. So whereas before my DNS lookups were failing using the default DNS server, we can see now that they're perfectly fine. It's interesting to observe, this is covered in the documentation as well, that the DNS changes are not reflected inside of the normal IP config settings, etc. For example, here, I do not see any DNS servers specified on the VPN interface, but if I look up the local NRPT rules, which are used for DNS manipulation on Windows, I can indeed see this server is being used. And most importantly, if I go to websites, I can actually browse them. Now, sometimes this can be useful if all of your users are trying to access a third-party service, for example, a SaaS service, where you might have highly secure data. Of course, this SaaS service will be using identity-based security, so you have to have the right password, multi-factor authentication, maybe certificates, 
But in terms of locking that down in the most secure way, that third party service might also allow the ability to apply IP allow listing. So they might say, even if you authenticate correctly with MFA, I'm still not going to let you in unless you come from a trusted IP address. So you can imagine a scenario where you've got thousands of users and they're all using their local ISP. That's not really going to be realistic to add all of those thousand IP addresses which constantly change to that third party service. Whereas if you were tunneling all of your users through the Azure firewall, that IP address is predictable and you could give that one IP address to that third party provider. Now, like I said, using centralized internet breakout for all of your traffic can reduce the performance and introduce bottlenecks, especially if you have thousands of users. So is there a way of us allowing users here to go from the blue box to the red box directly for all of their traffic, except for specific routes that we want to implement to go via the green box? So to highlight how we do this, I want to draw your attention here to two boxes at the bottom. These are two more websites on the internet that can be used to find out what your IP address is. So ifconfig.co and telnetmyip.com. If I jump to a terminal here and SSH to telnetmyip.com, you can see that my IP address that I'm manifesting as to the internet is Azure Firewall. Equally, if I curl the ifconfig.me website, I'm also getting back the Azure Firewall IP address. So all traffic's going through Azure Firewall as we highlighted a second ago. Now, I also know that if I ping this telnetmyip.com, this is the IP address behind that domain name that's highlighted here on my diagram. So what if I could modify my client config to only send traffic destined to this IP address via the VPN, via Azure Firewall, and leave all other traffic going via local breakout. You could imagine that scenario being useful if this telnetmyip.com was in fact a third party service, which had a known set of destination IPs. So to achieve that behavior, I can again look to modify in the include root section of the XML file. Now I've removed those slash ones and I've inserted just the slash 32 here. Again, back on my Azure VPN client, I've set up that third profile and imported that more specific XML file. And in a similar fashion, when I connect that profile, you see I do learn the 00, zero from virtual WAN. But down the bottom here, I now lose the slash ones and have that more specific slash 32, which means if I go back to my terminal here, I would expect that only traffic going to this public IP, which sits behind the telnet myip.com, to be going via my VPN. And we can show that by, if I curl the ifconfig site, which I know isn't being sucked down the VPN, it's now being targeted by my local ISPs, public IP. Whereas if I go to the telnet myip service, that is still being forced via virtual WAN. So just to replay that back on the diagram, in my current config, where my XML file contains that single root, all traffic destined for that one service is being pulled back to the green box out via Azure Firewall to the internet. All other local traffic is going out locally because we know the default route of the local Wi-Fi interface is preferred. And of course, if I had other VNets, et cetera, hanging off this green box inside a virtual WAN, they would also use the client VPN service. Okay, I hope you found that explanation interesting. If you were trying to use this service or think about using Azure as a centralized internet breakout, either entirely for your internet traffic with caution, as we talked about, or perhaps it's useful for you if you need to implement this allow listing on a third party provider. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you in the next one.